Hello and good morning to the chairman of TF Connect, Trevor Foley, and the new managing director, Miranda Martin. First off, Trevor, I'm interested to know how you're getting on with being called Mr. Chairman. The pressure is crushing, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> or the other way to look at it is I've just been moved upstairs and that makes life much easier. Miranda, be useful. You've obviously recently been appointed as managing director of TF Connect. Be good to us for people that don't know you. I'm sure they're few and far between. Just give us a bit about your background, why you chose to to join Trevor, why now, and what what you're looking to achieve with TF Connect. Sure. So I am an events practitioner by trade until now. Um, obviously. Being part of the hiring, recruiting, talent consulting team is always part of an events organizer's job. But um, I started out, well, actually selling tickets and hustling and promoting 100 years ago, and then had my first sort of proper job working for Tim Etchells, doing a lot of sort of niche market trade shows, as well as IP led sort of brand experiences and that sort of thing. And then was sold by them to Montgomery and went to run their experiences division at uh, Fresh Montgomery for a few years. And then most recently was running Pub and Park. So did a bit of consumer as well. So quite a, a diverse experience across the industry, both consumer and trade. As I understand it, Trevor recruited you into your previous position. Was that right? That's that's right. And, and actually you asked why TF Connect. Well, serendipitous I think that's yeah. the word that we keep using Trevor and I have known each other since my Montgomery days because you know Montgomery were involved with TF Connect at that time and Trevor kindly asked me to come into the office to talk about how we look to hire people within my team and and sort of ever since that time Trevor and I kept in touch and when I started looking for new opportunities Trevor was the obvious person that I went to and then so so he got me my job at Brand and again, when I left Brands, he was the first person I told <laughs> that I was leaving. And then he worked on me for a little while, courting me. And it just felt like, you know, having had, you know, 16 plus years experience in the events and industry, doing both trade and consumer, and obviously knowing what it takes to run a business um, within the sphere, it felt like I had the experience to come in and, you know, advise on what what that could look like from a recruitment perspective but also have obviously got a little black book and yeah it just felt like the right thing at the right time Trevor Trevor obviously wanted to go upstairs and he was looking for somebody and I came along at the right time Trevor there was a lot of activity in the trade show and exhibition space specifically from an M&A perspective in mm. 2023 lots of significant mm. deals lots of mergers acquisitions either private equity led or yeah, just straight mergers. Give us a sense of, do you think that's going to continue this year and beyond? Dan, I don't think we've got started. You know, yes, it was a big year in 23. Oh. I, I don't think we've got started in what 24 is going to look like. I had lunch with another of your regular contributors, Doug Emsley, last Friday, and we were just discussing yeah. the range of businesses that will be on the market uh, this year. If you're looking to buy and you're looking for a million pound EBITDA or 5 million or 10 million or 50 million, all of those options are going to be there. Those that are currently buying will stop buying. That creates opportunities for other parties to buy. And it's just going to be an incredible year, I think, for our industry. You know, there's private equity money around. There's private money around. The, the strategics and corporates will, will still want to buy some stuff. And then it's going to go in interesting waves throughout the year. Sure. Miranda, follow up question on how that relates to, I guess, what you're going to do with TF Connect and the job market generally. What opportunities, what impact does that bring, I guess, for, for candidates, for companies that are recruiting in the market, sort of this sort of consolidation and, and continued merger and acquisition activity? So generally, any M&A creates you know, new job opportunities, but also a cause for streamlining within businesses. So 
there will be new roles created, new strategies, you know, growth strategies, also cons- some consil- consolidation, which will mean that there's plenty of candidates out there. And, you know, some healthy movement across the industry is good. One of the things that I've certainly noticed working in festivals most recently is, you know, there's a lot of commercial requirements across the board from a festival's perspective because, you know, cost increases across the board, which affect both trade shows and festivals, mean that everybody's got to be out there chasing revenue. So lots of sort of, you know, commercial roles, I think, in the months ahead, because people are going to have to be focusing on how to generate more revenues as part of all of this M&A and, you know, development of the industry. Just specifically, Trevor, on private equity Mm. and the interest in the industry, obviously, you know, people weren't sure what was going to happen post-COVID, whether private equity were going to hang around. Mm. I mean, clearly, you know, that's that's definitely been the case. They are they are here and looks like they're here to stay. Would you would you agree with that in terms of types of funding that these deals are going to require? Yes, Dan, I do agree. The reason being is that most organisers saw a position that their 2023 revenues and profits were greater than they were in 2019. From a buying perspective, that allows 2021 and 22 to effectively be sidelined. And so many had such good events and portfolios of shows this year that they they already know that their 24 figures are are going to be good based on rebooks. And the fact that the internet failed to kill the events industry yet again with COVID and the other virtual shows. It just showed the private equity world that we're here and we're resilient and going nowhere and in fact growing. Sure. And Miranda, talk to me about international roles because obviously TF Connect have got reach. You know, we're, we're in the UK today, but obviously have got reach all, all over the world. And a lot of these, the M and A activity and growth, obviously, is outside the UK into the States, Middle East, even Australia. Talk to me about how you're seeing the activity from a candidate perspective and the types of roles that are being recruited for outside of the UK. So we have some exciting things in the pipeline, I should say, internationally, and some things that we will be announcing next year that I probably can't say more than that about Mm -hmm. right now. But we're certainly seeing an increased demand in some territories for roles right now. And, um, And we see some opportunities where we're going to grow into some new markets next year, and with some quite exciting people. We are still seeing the American market being as strong as uh, as the British market. We're seeing the Middle East to be incredibly strong, and yeah. Asia is still struggling to you know to come to come to a position where organisers trust what's happening over there. Yes, the shows are coming back, but we're not seeing the growth there yet. However. It's stateside and in Asia that we're looking at some growth in the TF Connect business and and growing into those regions. The Middle East is becoming increasingly significant for us. So it's those three areas, if you like, of the globe that that you're going to see a real pickup in our activities during 24. Okay. And Miranda, question for you. In terms of compensation plans and just generally what candidates are expecting and requesting there was definitely a shift post covid you know not just in terms of working practices but and i know in the main you deal at tf connect more with the senior roles but just generally how's that looking is is that settled down what are some of the things that people are sort of requesting is it still sort of a brave new world post the pandemic in terms of packages can you give us a flavor of of how that's working at the moment Well, I think the trend for a desire for equity continues. You know, I think I think during COVID, during the pandemic, there was a period of reflection for a lot of people out there. And I think people felt that they wanted to be, you know, really incentivized to work like they were working, which, you know, we absolutely should all be working that way, but really felt like they wanted a piece of the pie and an incentive to be loyal and long term and the rest of it. And we don't see that changing. Okay, interesting. And I also wanted to ask you about, I guess, the the ongoing evolution of trade show and exhibitions in terms of the format and the content. You know, lots of people Mm. talk to me about 
festivalization of trade shows, also the impact of on AI in terms of the experience of people. How do you see that affecting the job market and the candidates? Does that mean that companies are going to have to recruit from outside of the industry? And I know, Trevor, we've spoken about this before. I don't know which one of you want to pick that up in terms of how you see that shifting the dial on the types of candidates people uh, or the types mm. of candidates companies are looking to recruit. Yeah, I'll, I'll start from two real yeah. headlines is that the world of the convex is alive and kicking. If people have got an exhibition, they want content. If people are currently running a conference business, they want an exhibition. So we're mostly being briefed to find people that can deliver a convex. So, so content and right. of course the revenue from the from the show side. And the other key word is commerciality. So whatever role we're being asked to recruit for, it can be a marketing director, but they've got to be commercial. It can be an operations manager, but they've got to understand right. commerciality of revenue drivers, cost control. So convex and commercial are the two things that are really driving. Miranda will have a better idea than I on anything digital. As you know, that's a, <laughs> uh, that's a dodgy area for me. <laughs> yes, but Miranda, I'm interested to, to know... You know, there's a definitely explosion of sort of data related roles, especially at some of the bigger trade show companies yeah. that, you know, have now got significant data related departments. Is that a trend you're seeing continuing? Are there are there more sort of AI focused? G give us a sense of the sort of tech roles that maybe you're talking to companies about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in all of my experience working with organizers, there is a desire to get smarter and get, you know, te technically better in terms of the visitor experience, any sort of tailored personalization, personalized experience, user journey, you know, all of that sort of stuff is going to be good for, you know, repeat business, loyal customers, all of that sort of thing. So absolutely, you know, we need to, as an industry, get better at serving our audiences and doing that in a cut through way in a world where there's so much noise and content is the way to do that. So absolutely, there are going to be lots of, you know, technological marketing and sales roles for sure. Cool. Thank you. And finally, Trevor, with, with regards to yourself, you know, we joked mm. about you moving upstairs in your new role as chairman. Tell us, tell yeah. us really what that, what that means, because I think the industry would, would like to know. Obviously, you've been a fixture on the trade show and exhibition, the, the international <laughs> set for, for many years. I'm assuming yep. you're not going to go off and playing rounds of golf and doing bike rides every day. How involved are you going to be going forward? I I, I will still be involved on a, not not a daily basis, hopefully, but certainly a lot of the business that TF Connect attracts is because of what we are and our experience and knowledge. But there's more. There's a lot more to be done with on, on the client side. I think the thing I enjoy most, and there's been a good experience of it during 23, is that organisers, venues, contractors will talk to me about their plans for one, two, three years ahead, and you know we're sometimes helping companies over that two or three year period get ready for sale get ready for the team they need in place after that so it's a very long process it's a very organic process and i'll spend more time on that just talking to clients about bringing business in uh, rather than waiting for that to come to us and uh, you know we're 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 swamped with roles which is a really nice place to be and uh, miranda will pick up on uh, making sure that we're we're continuing to deliver for for everybody in the industry